London on the very prestigious Old Bond Street where Jeja Le Coult has just opened its new flagship store. This store reflects the new codes of the brand coming back to an art deco style of the late 1920s, early 1930s, synonymous with the Reverso and Atmos collection of the brand. This style is now adapted to all their flagship stores across the world, but each time adapting it to reflect more of the country's speciality. For instance, here you will have special British furniture that you won't see anywhere else. The concept behind this boutique is an invitation for the customer to better understand the universe of the brand and solely the watches. The first part is showcasing the main collections of the brand and at the back you have the heritage section showcasing some historical timepieces of the brand and the special implication of Jeja Le Coult with the UK. For instance, they are showing the special watch that was worn by Queen Elizabeth for her coronation. But let's now focus on the Reverso, one of the most iconic watch of watchmaking. As some of you may know, this watch was designed in 1931 for British officers that were serving in India and who were playing polo. And the reversing characteristic of the watch face enabled to protect the watch during intense polo matches. For this London boutique, a special edition with a green lacquer dial was produced, but limited to 26 timepieces and unfortunately they've all been sold out. <laughs> Now let's go and discover in real life why polo players needed the functionality of the reverso. So I guess this is the real stuff. Now we're here at the Gold Cup in Cowdray. Can you explain us a little bit about this event? Uh, this is the best tournament in the world outside of Argentina. It's where the best polo teams come together. It's the home of British polo and it's the, for us, there is no better place than Cowdray than the home of British polo to celebrate our Reverso heritage and the ultimate uh, polo watch. So for us, it's the finals of an amazing tournament uh, with a lot of history and meaning for us. So polo seems to be quite a physical uh, sport. Can you give us a bit more insight on this dimension of the game? Yeah, it's quite physical and it's a little bit dangerous too, you know, it's a little bit like car racing. You don't have many accidents, when, when, but when you have an accident it can be pretty bad. And so how do you protect yourself while you're, while you're playing? No, you, you learn how to fall and then you have protections on your elbows, you have protections on your head, on your knees and your legs that is the, you know, when you bang horse to horse, you have 500 kilos against 500 kilos. And your and your legs are in between, so that that can be pretty bad. But it's not the you get used to. And uh, while looking at the game, and you see that uh, I mean you go very fast on the horse. Do you have a kind of special relation to time while you're playing? Yeah, for us the time is is, is quite precious. Uh, you see the watch there that you see next to the checkers. We are we when we play we are watching that all the time because it's the minutes that we play the horses. So we know after we know each horse. The horse can, can last more minutes than other ones, so you try, you try to play the horses that before, before they get too tired. That is usually when you play four or five minutes after the, five, the fifth minute, the horse starts to get really tired and then when you have the bad injuries or you lose place. I always ride with my watch because I know exactly what, time, what, what amount of time I have to ride them and exercise them before a game or do, two days before the game, so it's quite important. Thank you very much for your time and have a nice day. No, you too, and I hope you enjoy the Jazzer Le Culture Gold Cup. <laughs> <laughs>